on. And uh, uh, let, me, let me go over here to see if it actually comes up. Uh, yeah, it's starting to go. Anyway, I want to say hello to, uh, first of all, you're a little in the dark there, uh, Dan. But Yeah, you, yeah, I noticed but, that. But, um, I'll have to do something about that. I don't know if I can get into my uh, settings while... Uh, well, it seems better now, doesn't it? Yeah, no, that, you, no, that, that was better. That, that was, first of all, I know that's what it's doing. There, uh, 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 by the way, Rick, you have to turn down your audio. Somebody, or somebody has to turn down their audio. Mine is down now. Well, uh, somebody else is. Uh, I hear it. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Who, who's who am I getting sound from? Everybody, be quiet. I'll tell you in a second. By the way, Rick, you have to turn down your audio. Somebody, somebody has to turn down their audio. I have no idea where that audio. Oh, I know where it's coming from. Somebody else. Your computer. Yeah, it's coming from me. Mm -hmm. Hold on a second. Who am I getting sound from? I'm yelling at everybody else, and then I, uh, I'm, I'm making the big mistake myself. Hello, Josh Wheeler. Uh, hey, how you doing? Yeah. And uh, th th there's a there's a, there's an incoming call, but it it it's. Uh, it's, I can't take it. It's hard, but I get this thing where there's a call from like three people at a time, and I can't. If I go to it, I lose all of you. So, Charlene, well, that's why I didn't uh, answer you. Yeah, I got that too. I was just, I was just on a call mm -hmm. that said it was from Gabnet Broadcasting. It's calling me right now. Gabnet Broadcasting is calling me right now. I'm getting the same thing. Charlene Martinez yeah, and, and Rin. You know, now has it gone away now? Well, no. I declined. I declined it, but just before I called you, I was actually talking to. Yeah. Let me Rob. close that. Let me close that there. Yeah, I think Rob's trying to call you probably because I was just talking to him and David. Oh no, I can get Rob. Right yeah, there now. he is. There he is. Yeah. He'll tell you we were just talking on a totally separate call. And I was just sitting here, and I, I was getting ready to call the show, and I heard the Skype sound, and I thought it was from your show, and I was like, man, I don't know, that's awful loud. Is that is that my Skype? And I look over to my screen, and it's you guys calling me, and I'm like, well, they, yeah. and here it is again. So I don't know, something crazy going and, on. And I have no idea why why Charlene and Rin come on the same line together, but I can't put them on the air. So, ladies, quick calling. Uh, yeah, they're gonna have to. Hang up and call back. Probably is what they're going to have separately. to do. Yeah, and I yeah. keep I keep I trying to get rid of them here. Close it out so that it doesn't come up. Okay, and I got yeah, you guys. Skype Skype is great, but it has these um, anomalies. Things, little, little every weird once in a while, anom uh, anomal anomalies that happen. Let's see <laughs> how many people we got here. One, two. Let's see here. Well, David, David Almost kind of is having a hard time. time. By the way, everybody, look at that. There's Dan Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Let's hear it for him. He finally Here got I a am. camera, and the first we can see time and my big debut. My camera driving. finally showed up in the mail today. Yeah, so yeah, it's a wonderful. <laughs> That's thing. pretty damn cool. <laughs> uh, let's see here. David's still trying to. Get, are you there, David? He's having trouble tonight. Doug's yeah, there, perfect. and Mark's there, he Patrick's on, there. He was on camera when I first came on. Right. So. We got eight people. Well, he was he, he was on that side call with me and with Rob, yeah. and Charlene was on there too, but she apparently didn't know because we could hear you guys in the background on the show. It was crazy. Skype, I was crazy. I don't know what to There's some nights <laughs> that it just decides to go bananas. Right. That, uh, that, by the way, is a Josh Wheeler. Let me introduce everybody, especially because we're doing this on video right now. Uh, Rick Horn and Teresa Horn. Wait, there we go. And uh, they're together tonight Lovely because couple. he's not traveling the highways and byways of the East Coast. <laughs> uh, Dan Meyer, who's out there in Cincinnati. Um, yeah. And uh, Doug Dupuy, uh, who is uh, down there in wherever it is. I don't know. Charlotte, somewhere? South do, Carolina. Do, 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 do. Uh, uh, Mark Thorner, he's down in Naples, Florida. There's Patrick right there. It'll put him right there. Uh, and uh, why do I talk to him like he's a you know a trophy or something? And and Rob, hi Rob. Hey there. Yeah. Uh, so everybody uh, feeling good tonight? Yeah, yeah. It's Friday. I would say so. Friday. Yeah. It's Friday. Yeah. 
Uh, Friday, it, Friday. Da, 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 that's a that song. Yeah. I can't sing it for copyright reasons, right? It, well, you, 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 it sounds like if you did, they still it wouldn't have copyright problems because you can't <laughs> sing well enough. <laughs> they wouldn't recognize it. Now, is that an e-cigarette you're smoking? Yeah. Now, you that's know, my is it my imagination, vaping. or is there more smoke that comes out of those things? Or at well, least, it's not smoke. See, I know this it, is. A, I mean, there's no odor from it or anything. Yeah, but it I, looks like it's it, just steam, basically vapor. Yeah, but I mean, how, I can how, make a lot how, of smoke come how out. How do you know that the vapor isn't going to be like secondhand vapor? <laughs> I used to it have just a dissipates. pipe that looked like that. It was called a smokeless pipe, and you used to use it for marijuana. And I used to, well, I used to work at a bank when I was 18, and I used to go down. I was the only male teller. Yeah. I used to go down to the vault and. Really? <laughs> By the way, while yeah, you're talking rec- there for a second, let me. They, uh, I think the government just recently just said what little regulations they're going to use on these, and Alex just left. So, I guess no, it's my I just, show I just, now. I left to so. go turn on my big light so that I could oh, okay. be seen by the TV people. I thought he just gave up and said, I'll nah. screw it. Nah. I'm done with this. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. I'm, I'm doing fine here. Just adjust my camera. You know, because this is, uh, this is uh, uh, I probably should put the cap on too, right? You know, because it's TV night. And mm-hmm. So I, I remember from last week, remember we were talking about this? And we were going to have a show and tell night? Oh, yeah. That's right. I brought, yeah, I brought, that's I brought my uh, my mask here. Now, that is a, uh, what, do, what do they call those things again? CPAP. A CPAP. Yeah. What, what that's is my CPAP mask. So what does CPAP stand for? Uh, I don't know. Party <laughs> Sir, look it up. Speak at the sheep. It, now, oh, that's n- never mind. Now, do you have that thing hooked up, or you just got it? Uh... No, no, no. I don't... Oh, yeah, I was right. I was going to hook it up so I could try to talk. Like Darth Vader. See how wonderful that is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's it's. Doesn't look at that! Make... I can't even I... see Dan. He got a video camera, and he's got so much vapor coming out that you can't see him. <laughs> like in a fog. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I okay. I did that for dramatic effect because of what you said. I did a little extra there. <laughs> <laughs> it's making me cough. So show and tell night tonight. Well, first Uh-oh. of all, uh, yeah, oh no, you got uh, that. To, that could be a dangerous uh, subject. It, it was especially. I'll show you with... my favorite beer stein. Hold on a second. Oh, I was afraid he was going to say something else there. After yeah, me too. <laughs> maybe I'm going to show you my out. penis. Maybe he's gone forever. Are you there, by the way? Ain't much to show in there. Anyway, here's my favorite beer stein right there. Damn dragon eating somebody. Wait, wait, wait. Side. Wait, wait, back off. There. Back off a little bit. Let's see it from a distance so that we can see it. It looks like, can you describe? <laughs> would you describe it to people, please? It's a dragon eating somebody. It's a dragon eating somebody. And do you really yeah. ever drink beer out of that, or is that just for bragging rights? It's been, I, I, I used to drink beer out of there, but I was afraid I was going to break it. And so I like kind of retired it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been like, on my counter for 20 years now. Now, David, are you there, David? Doesn't look like no, it. No, it's not. Yeah. He, 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 yeah. Just, he, just seems, he just seems like he's there. Oh, he, 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 no, it just keeps... Uh, like yeah, yeah. It's I'll, like I'll remove him call and he, he can call back. Uh, how you doing tonight, Patrick? Hold on a second. I got to blow my nose. Uh, you see, here's the bad part about it. I usually just turn down my mic like that, and then I blow my nose. But the fact is that tonight people are watching this on the T and V, uh, and well, I'm. What are you doing? Here's my other favorite oh. show and tell. The sneeze. Oh. Little Al, Tony Montana. Is that Tony Montana? I yeah. thought it was. I thought it was John Travolta. <laughs> wait, wait, what? what the, play, oh, play, play that what? again. What? The cockroach? No, no more. No, why not? More, 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 more. We want more. Are you sure? Yeah, okay. we want more. All I have in this world is my balls and my words, and I don't break them for no man. Now, look at the bottom of the thing. Just look at the pedestal. Look at the bottom of it. Does it? Ha- no, the bottom of it. The, p- turn it sideways so you can see the bottom of it. Doug. You said turn it sideways. No. I, I, now you're turning it so I can see it. I want you to see what you just showed me. 
Oh, boy. Can you see it? No, I can see it, but I want you to look at the bottom. <laughs> I'm looking at the bottom. There we go. Let's all hear it for him, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, does it say anything there like uh, made by uh, Columbia Pictures or whoever the company was? Or... Uh, Universal Studios. Oh, really? So it is, uh, that's why they can use the audio in there. I guess so. Yeah. Okay, that's all. It, it, it was an anniversary gift for my wife. Oh, that was the best she could come up with on an anniversary? No, you know, she, she usually buys me watches and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That remind me of all yeah. the damn time I spent with her. Yeah, well, let's go back to that. Uh, oh, here, here. We got uh, we got uh, Jim uh, Jim Browning, better known to the rest of the world as Revel Stoke Jim. Hi, Rebel Jim. Stoke Jim, hi. Right. How are you? How you feeling tonight? Oh, pretty good. Yeah? You're gonna, I don't know if you sound good. You're going to croak your way through a show tonight? I'm going to do my best, yep. <laughs> sounds like Andy he's, Devine. Sounds yeah. like she's just <laughs> hiding under in a hole or something. And, Do you remember uh, Andy? Who who said Andy Devine? Uh, I did. Uh, 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 Rick, okay, so you're 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 old enough to remember Andy Devine. Oh yeah. Many and, a Saturday morning watching him yeah. on Andy's gang. Yeah, but you know, before that he was in western movies. You know, he right. was the yeah, sidekick. I remember those too. And the reason he had that weird voice of his was because he, when he was a kid, he fell on a stick and it went in his throat and it kind of trashed his throat and he always sounded like that for the rest yeah. of his life. Made him a fortune. Yeah. Yeah. There that was, was a time, unique voice. There, well, there were times in my life where things weren't going so well and I said, you know, if I, how could I make it in the radio <laughs> business? If I could only sound like Andy Devine, <laughs> you know, but that would entail me having to, you know, shove a stick down my throat so you know but anyway um uh, uh better to stick to something else oh thank you very much oh uh, goodness yeah, yeah. we had to go there didn't it, we he always has to go there yeah patrick what's new with you um tomorrow i get to go attend a two-hour church ceremony for the confirmation of my godson oh really? oh yeah yeah oh. wonderful that yeah. sounds fantastic. i can't talk <clears throat> What are they <laughs> what are they confirming? That he is a Catholic. So he goes mm. through like a year's worth of classes, learning about Catholicism, and then uh it kind of a public uh affirmation of I'm a Catholic, I follow the Catholic doctrines mm -hmm. and it's a two hour mass, so I can't wait. Uh -oh. Oh, when does he get lost and all does, that? What, what were you saying, Doug? It's not as bad as a three-hour bar mitzvah, though. It, it's a three-hour bar mitzvah? In, in essence, it is. It's Yeah, the, the three-hour yeah. bar mitzvahs are it's even more fun. You know something? The only thing I found, the only thing worse than, uh, than going to a bar mitzvah is being the person who is doing the bar mitzvah. Like, I remember yes. when I was a kid, that whole thing was just, it was... It, what a thing to do to your child to have them get up in front of everybody on their 13th birthday and have to read Hebrew from a, from a Torah, right? Which by the way, they had me memorize. I didn't know how to read Hebrew. I mean, I faked my way through my bar mitzvah. <laughs> I could read and, but I, I never went to Hebrew school. So I used to cut all the time. And then finally, a, a few weeks before the bar mitzvah, I decided you could actually get a record that had it, and you could just learn to do the chanting and everything else from the record, which yeah. is exactly what I did. Right. Well, I, I did it for the gifts. You know. Yes. Oh, yeah. A fountain pen? Yeah, yeah, today I am a fountain pen, <laughs> as the old saying used to go. Because what happened is, oh, God, we're losing Jim. Boy, it's one of those nights where the Internet is not, the gods of the Internet are not uh, smiling upon us. Yes, Doug. Well, there was that movie they recommended, um, A Serious Man by the Coen Brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and watched that poor kid going through that process <coughs> for his bar mitzvah where after he got finished smoking pot. Right. Yeah, it was like, and he somehow pulled it through. So, yeah. If anybody, if nobody's seen that movie, y'all need to you need to watch. No, it nobody's right seen that movie. That the, the one thing about a serious man is, uh, I often wondered who they thought was going to watch that movie, except for other Jews. You know. Yeah, I I watched right it, play. but I just wasn't. Uh, 
I what you I know. Don't. I mean, Sorry. he can't. I mean, that was right after. You know, when did that movie come out? It came out about two, three years ago, something like yeah, that. Yeah, about three years ago or so. Yeah, yeah. I think. Oh, I would think it was right after No Country for Old Men. There's the one oh, they yeah. followed that up with. Yeah, this is so, no, this is yeah, no, country no Country for, for Old, old Men Jews. was genius, but yeah. that was. Hey, um, I, 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 speak... I just love that movie. Oh, I remember okay. Alex was like saying, "If you're not a Jew, you're not going to like this movie." And I like a Coen Brothers movie. I mean, not everyone. I, 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 it's I, just, I thought you Burn know, After uh, Lee uh, yeah, sucked. And, uh, well, but you, I mean, I, I saw yeah. that movie. And I was like, God, I fell in love with that movie. I just, I own it now on Blu-ray. Well, under any conditions, it's it's kind of a difficult movie to watch uh, because uh, you, you it, it it's a weird little film. I mean, I love the film. I just love it. But it's a You're weird... You're laughing at this guy's problems, and you it's it, like, you know, I just... should be laughing at this guy's getting divorced from his wife screwing around. The wife kicks him out of his own house. And by the way... When she's doing it yeah. wrong, and her boyfriend is screwing this guy over. And there's no happy ending, by the way. Nothing no, really even not. remotely rep, uh, 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 being a happy ending. Uh, yes, uh, Dan, you're raising your hand. Uh, See, Dan, you yeah, can do you... that now. Yeah, I like the raising my hand thing. But uh, anyway, talking about if I could expand yeah, um, right back. to the Coen Brothers and Fargo. You're talking about the Fargo TV show. Mm -hmm. And I watched it. And, you know, it took a while to get into it. But I did really like it that once the plot started going. But to me, when I first started watching the show, all I could think of was Mayberry RFD. If that makes any sense, if 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 the movie was the Andy Griffith show, then the TV show was like Mayberry RFD. You have the, well, did the you ever see the salesman. original? But did you ever see the original movie Fargo or did, the original oh, movie? Oh God, yes, I oh, did. Okay, it so did that remind you of favorites, favorites, that, favorites? That reminded you of Mayberry? No, I mean Little Town. I'll let me kind of elaborate just because I maybe jumped ahead or something there. But um, it just, for one thing, the main character in the TV show yeah. looks a little like Ken Berry. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his name is. Yeah. I know I know Billy Bob Thorne. And I saw Bob Odenkirk was in there last week. That was kind of surprising. And he's on the show. He's a regular. Yeah, yeah. In and, fact, uh, he's, the, he's the police chief. Great cast. He's the police yeah. chief now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a great show. It took a little second to grow on me because, um, you know, just you like the movie so much. And they did a lot of the shots the same, kind of to mirror the look of the film. Yeah. And I thought they were, you know, and at first I was, I thought they were, I was like, oh, my God, they're just trying too hard. But then once the plot got going, it's, you know, it's its own thing. It's a good thing. show. It's a good show. Absolutely. It's a good show. Yeah. Did, like you, did you see it this week? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was. I, I like um, the way they ki killed that guy in the eyes. I thought that that <laughs> yeah, was man. somewhat gruesomely oh, brilliant. Back. Huh? Yeah. Oh, That's the Iron Man. Back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's happening? G Jim's back again. And look That's at him. Yeah, I'm back. Uh, let me put you full screen here for the people on the TV. It's Iron Man. How you doing? Do I call you Iron or do I call you Mister Man? You can call me Iron. <laughs> Mr. Man. Wait a oh. minute. Is it, Are you wearing some kind of jacket that's an Iron Man jacket? No, I just have a, it's my, it's just a hoodie. It's, it's my, it's my, yeah, there. <laughs> there we go. Gangsta. gangsta Iron Man. Uh, uh, yeah. Shoot that thug. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> gangsta Iron Man. Iron Man. <laughs> there we go. Where's George Zimmerman when you need him? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, Jim. Every week, you had the Batman last time, right? Yeah, I had the Batman last time. Yeah. And yeah. I just thought I'd do something different tonight. Yeah. So. Okay. And it's, it's good. <laughs> so, anyway, hi, Josh. How are you doing this evening? Doing well. How are you doing? Good. What, what 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 in the news has been tickling your fancy? Anything? Uh, no, not really much in the news right now, is there? So, I mean, it's the Ukraine thing. Yeah, that's been going on forever. It, I mean, you know, if I see that Obama 
threatened him again, don't do that or whatever. But, I mean, I guess all I can say is that's like when two people are getting into it and one guy keeps saying, man, if you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to hit you or whatever. You know, the only problem with that is eventually you're going to have to hit the guy or no one will believe you anymore. So right. Obama keeps saying, if you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to hit you. But eventually he's going to have to hit somebody. So yeah. I don't really understand what's going to happen. Would there. the perfect storm news-wise be a Ukrainian airliner ditching in the ocean and crashing into a ferry, Korean ferry boat? Yeah, that would be pretty sweet. Yeah. Especially <laughs> if we couldn't find it. <laughs> you know what I was thinking? I was what, what wondering, you, what, who, is now, who is uh, more, um, who do you root for more? The, fam the family members of the missing airliner or the family members of the capsized Korean boat? I because think it's both a bunch of crazy family members yelling about their dead relatives well, uh, the, the, at, least, at least on the boat they know where they're at and they yeah. pretty much I mean, well, they know it, that they're dead there was one really gruesome story today that came out of that is that one family member you know they're all waiting to find out if they find their kids dead bodies so they can bury them yeah. and have some kind of yeah. peace that way That's terrible. Uh, rather than lying down there and becoming fish food and uh, one family, uh, they brought a body up, and uh, they identified it as their kid. And mm. they were very, you know, at least relieved that they had found the body of their child. And then they did the DNA thing on them. Turns out it wasn't their kid. Yeah. I guess when they get that bloated, you really can't tell one from another. A drowning victims do not look gonna... pretty. Huh? Otter if they were... Drowning victims do oh, not just... look pretty. Really? I, yeah. Yeah, they're all bloated and stuff. Why? Well, I've, I've been to autopsies, and it, it 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 ain't a fun sight. Oh, you've been to autopsies? Yeah, yeah. I was a criminal justice major years ago, so I was at uh, uh, some autopsies down at uh, Bellevue at the morgue. Wow. Wow. I I got to know you the. Should I, tell, I have your own show and tell stories about like <laughs> different autopsies. Well, I would right. walk well, this, in and tell you about the, the eating the hot dog walking into the autopsy room, you know. Well, well the same thing right. happens. The same thing happens with uh, with dead bodies that are left laying out in like extreme humidity. Mm -hmm. um, it was a big problem in the Pacific Theater in World War II. Guys would always talk about how, you know, the guys that were left laying there that they couldn't collect, you know, like each day the body would just get bigger and bigger. the hands would be like the size of your head after a couple of days. It was a pretty common. Uh, well, observation, uh, I guess, from uh, the, people. The the, uh, the um, what's his name? The uh, the former um, uh, morti uh, head mortician. What do they call him? The the head coroner. Head coroner, coroner. Uh, of New York who wound up testifying in the O.J. Simpson trial. I'm trying to remember his Michael name. Michael Baden. Ma Michael yeah, Baden. Michael, I, I had lunch. I had lunch with him one day because Al Goldstein used to hold these Sunday lunches. And I was sitting next to him, and so, of course, you know, when you're talking to a coroner, man, you got all kinds of questions you can ask. Uh, you want to be careful, though, because you're also eating at the same time, and you don't know. <laughs> and uh, it's something I learned from him, and I think it's coming up, and I think it's April or May is what they commonly referred to at the coroner's office as floaters month. <laughs> Now, this was because people would die and fall into the Hudson River. And, of course, in the cold, they sink. But when the yeah. water heats up, they oh, rise man. to the surface. So the, it's like in May, all of a sudden, all these bodies start popping up and bobbing in the Hudson River and over in the East River. And uh, this is uh, it's Floaters Month. So I decided. <laughs> How many do they get per year? Huh? How many do they get per year? Uh, 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 I have no idea. I didn't ask him that, but he 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 was happy to tell me about Floaters Month. Yeah, but I I didn't ask him much more. Uh, uh, yes, Doug. Was that the doctor that used to have that show on HBO? Yeah. It's yes. Like an yes. autopsy show. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. That was yes. a great show. I don't know why they got rid of it. I mean, it was very interesting. Was, Maybe yeah. because it went on for like seven years, and they finally decided enough is enough. <laughs> yeah, too bad. I mean, <laughs> even though it's kind of a morbid you know, storyline and all that, but still, it was an interesting show. Yeah, and, and it was like that. It was like they did that one show about that singer who did that song like uh, "Beware of the Cheater." I forget what the guy. You know, it was like a song back in the sixties, like "One Hit Wonder." Mm -hmm. Who was killed, and they featured that guy. You know, he was like in a 
lever's triangle or something like that. Yeah. So anyway. Okay. Uh, Great show. Huh? <laughs> Well, I, I just wanted to say, yeah, yeah, uh, Doug, Doug just uh, sounded the grind, grinding halt alarm here on the program. <laughs> My pleasure. What were you going to say, Jim? Jim? Well, it's the same thing with uh, animals. The uh, I, as a kid, we were staying somewhere, and uh, a bear had actually in the early fall before hibernation, he had. Uh, got into this lake and drowned and then come summertime he popped back up and, and I was with a friend and I knew better but this kid couldn't help but be impressed with this huge bloated carcass went running up to it poked it with a stick and it kind of just exploded on him oh my um, goodness yeah, so oh. never, never poked stench. a bloated bear yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, my, no. oh my! Oh my! Oh my! I didn't know that you could make them explode. I, yeah. But I guess I guess what well, happens gas. is the other they side get that gas in there. Yeah. We. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, but what you do is if you can get them out without poking them, you put like tethers on them, and, and the Macy's Day Parade comes up in uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> But uh, um, uh, no, I, I, I just, uh, oh, uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah. Oh, see, see, Dan now is really using his camera yeah. a lot. He's holding yes. his hand up. Uh, nice camera, Dan. Yes. Oh, thank you, sir. I know Jim was looking forward to it. Actually, the um, good thing, Dan, would also be, this is a good idea, is, is move back a little bit so we can see your whole face and not half your face. There you go. Okay. You, you'll, you'll learn well, this like the rest of them yeah, have. I mean, uh, yeah, Pat, Patrick, like Patrick, Patrick basically. Process. I'll have to go through and figure out where. I, I get, When I got the camera, first thing I got it, I yeah. called uh, Charlene just so we could, uh, I could test it out and she could tell me how it looked and everything. So I'm surprised Charlene didn't call in, but well, she, she was tried my first to, test. She tried case. to, but the <laughs> trouble was it was like, I don't know, it was in some. It was like a, a, another subset. Like here, when I'm talking to all you people, you're all on one uh, thing. This is Dan Meyermark, uh, uh, you know, Thorner, and a whole bunch of other people. You know what I'm talking about, Jim. And But what happened when they were calling is I got another one of those. So if I went to that, I would get them but not you. So I had to stick with this one. You know, I don't... I don't know what. Yeah. Anyway, what I was going to say was uh, when I was a kid, we lived in a farm and we raised sheep. And they, you know, they would die from time to time. And if they died further back in the pasture, we didn't know until the smell wafted up to the house, the way the wind was blowing. Mm -hmm. So mm. it was just really horrendous. So then we'd have to go out there and, yeah, they'd, it'd be this big bloated thing it was Farm totally disgusting is so. a place for me yeah. yeah wow so you know another add to the wonderful discussion of death on a friday evening i figured you know yeah <laughs> and he's from he's from cincinnati where the men are men yeah. and sheep are scared sheep are nervous yeah. yeah oh trust me i i heard all well the how jokes many here how many here have actually <laughs> seen a dead person Besides a funeral home? Okay. No, yeah, I mean, uh, it can be in a hospital anywhere. Rick and Teresa, where did you see a dead person? I was, I was uh, with my ex-mother-in-law, actually, when she passed away. Yeah. And, and do how, funerals count? Huh? Open casket funerals? Uh, I mean, well, that's, you're actually going out of your way to go somewhere where there is a dead person. As opposed to going somewhere never where looks the same, all of a sudden there right. becomes a dead person. I, I, lived, I was living in Queens at one time, yeah. um, and I was right off the Van Wick Expressway on Jewel Avenue. I don't know if anybody knows where that is, but yeah. um, I was walking down to my car one morning, and there was a dead body laying in the, the grass over there. Uh, that was kind of bizarre. And then there was another guy in Flushing Meadow Park who froze under the ice in the lake yeah and that's kind of weird also oh. so I, i've seen unfortunately i've seen a fair number of dead bodies oh let's yeah see, let's see here patrick dead body um well part of one um part, I, saw one that left. <laughs> I, saw, yeah, I saw a hand i saw what was left uh -huh. of a motorcycle that hit the back end of a uh car carrying semi-trailer um, 
and the motorcycle was spread over the three lanes of the highway, as was the unfortunate the victim. Driver. Yeah, it, it was. It Put was it, interesting, I guess, at the very best, but pretty, pretty fucking horrific. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. Who else here? Uh, 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 Dan. Well, uh, my mother and I both discovered my uh, great aunt who had uh, passed away over the overnight. I I had I was staying with her because you know she knew she was eighty one. It was real mm -hmm. close, and um, we discovered her. She had made it to the bathroom, but she didn't make it back. Hold on, so, hold, hold on a second. It's got to be Dave. Da David. David got to be David. David. Hello? Yes, David. Hello. Would you please not be talking to somebody else and also there's yeah. some there's some hey, noise David. there's some noise in your room. Yeah. If you don't work, uh, I'm going to have to fire you. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to have check. to hang up on that because uh, it's just too too noisy. <laughs> no. It's too noisy. No, if he call, turns down the fan. So, and, and, and the second one was, and he quits was my father when he died. So uh, that's uh, yeah. That's kind of a different thing because they're Dying. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, the, the, somebody dying counts, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Doug, Doug was got dead. his yeah. hand up. Either that, or he's frozen and he's dead. Yeah. We can I've only never, hope. Anyway, everyone, go ahead, Doug. Everyone I've seen died was has been in one piece, so so that's a good thing. Yeah, that's unlike Patrick, who you know, they fall to pieces around him. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, uh, uh, Doug. Yeah, I was going to Atlanta one day and. Um, going down uh, i guess it's highway 20 mm -hmm. and i see like a he about a mile ahead of me it looks like there's like all this stuff on the road i'm like thinking it was like looks like a minivan like wrecked and tumbled over and what it was was there was a guy in a harley davidson full dress harley that wrecked and all this stuff came out of the saddlebags on it and this it was really sad because this guy is like laying in the middle of this like uh in the median like in this drainage ditch and you can see, like, this blood, like, running down the cement, you know, like, heading towards the drain. And there's a bunch of cars already stopped and everything. And it was like, if I stop this, probably going to cause more of a commotion than anything else. But a couple of days later, when I was coming back, there was, like, already a memorial set up for this guy. And I was like, ah, jeez. You know, I was hoping maybe the guy was just, you know, injured, but, he, you know, he died. <laughs> How about you, Mark? Volunteer ambulance work. I oh, saw a couple. Oh. I've, seen, I've seen dead bodies. Was this in Florida? No, this was when I was um, living with my parents in Brooklyn. Because where you can see a lot of dead bodies in Florida is you go down to my you go into down to Miami Beach and just hang outside Wolfie's after the early yeah. bird special, and there's always an ambulance out front of that place piling people into it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to South Beach tomorrow. That should be interesting. Yeah. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, uh, David, have you uh, seen ever seen a dead person? No, thanks to God, I did not. You have not. Uh, no. G uh, Jim? Yeah. Well, besides my dad, but when I was a teenager uh, walking down the street in Vancouver, a, uh, uh, a guy threw himself off the roof of the homeless shelter and, and landed about six feet in front of me. Oh, that, oh, must, oh, that, must, have, that must linger to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had, uh, let me see here. here. I haven't asked Rob. Rob, anybody, uh, you ever see a dead person? Not one that I haven't gone to see. Yeah, in other words, one that, if funerals don't really count, because that way you are going out of your way to go see a dead person. Yeah, I've never run across. I mean, my father, two years ago, uh, we were at his deathbed, and within a half hour that we left, he passed. So it was within a half hour, but we weren't there when it happened. So because when my mother and my father both died, I had them. I had closed casket uh, funerals. I, I didn't want to see them, and I and I didn't want anybody else to see them. You know, I, I think that you should remember people as you remembered them alive, which le it leaves yep. me with my memory, which is a friend of mine a couple of years ago who died, and I uh, um, got the call. We were coming out of a movie theater. I got the call. <laughs> And I went, I went to the hospital, and there he was, you know, and he was lying in the bed, uh, 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 dead. Um, and it, it's the the, the kind of creepy thing about it was, his mouth was wide open, 
because they couldn't mm. shut it for they some reason. And it was just very yeah. weird. And I'm in this room with him. And, you know, this is a guy I've known all my life. I'm my closest friends. Oh, man, man. And wow. it really was, it's to this day, it kind of lingers with me. Yeah. yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, David, that's... we're getting a lot of room noise from you. I'm going to have to oh. say goodbye to you, David. Also, he's talking to people next to him. And, yeah. you know, you could care yeah. less about my bad him. habits. But let's say hello to Christine I... Hicks. Who was just Good joined. evening, guys. See, hey, Christine, what's going on? Yeah, what a what a change what? from last night's program, huh? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, what a change? Jesus, from, uh, what, uh, you couldn't get a word in. I was just, I was mesmerized, and I got a lot of work done. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, Rube can keep going. You know, got a, not, a lot of nice letters about him, and uh, we'll have him back on again. Or I, I even told him, look, anytime you want to, just call. You know, yeah, that was yeah. a great show. S yeah, he's really down to earth and everything. Uh, yeah, I guess he's, he's he sounds down to earth. That's part of the act. But <laughs> <laughs> no, he's actually a really sweet guy. Oh, he's a sweet guy. He's one of the sweetest guys I've ever known. You know, salt, yeah, salt he always food. was. This we're, weekend we're going to play the whole interview on Gabnet Rewind, and uh, I'm going to run this that I created. You know, uh, the in, as an imager right before his segment. Hey, you're listening to GovNet, and I'm going to go out mudding, get drunk with my uncle, and die of carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> Would you send that to me, too, so I can use it on the network? I'll send that to you. I, cre I, I thought oh, about that brilliant. before I went to sleep last night. I said, I'm going to create it, use the imager sounder, and add that. Wait, wait, do that again. Play it again. That's wonderful. Uh, wait a second to pot it up. Yeah. Hey, you're listening to GovNet, and I'm going to go out mudding, get drunk with my uncle, and die of carbon monoxide poisoning. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, boy. My, my, my boy Rube. Yeah. 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 I was going to say something. I forgot what it was, though. <laughs> well, then, no, then don't say it. Yeah, well, okay, I, I, I have tried to do. Raised. Okay. Uh, 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 yes. Christmas. I tried to do a picture because I know I can't I can't figure out how to do live feed because I can't load Skype on my work computer and that's all that's working right now in my life. Oh, okay. So you're on your you're on your computer at work. No, I can't load you guys on. I had to load Skype oh. on my phone. Oh, so oh, so it's on. You're talking on your phone. Oh yes. Well, the and reason so I added oh. a picture to my profile, oh, but I don't. The think reason it the reason you can't get a video to us is when we're doing group. <laughs> A session like this and you use a uh, Charlene sorry I can't pick up uh, your call because we're full up uh, uh, if, if uh, you are calling from an iPhone or an iPad and you attempt to use Skype uh, you can all you can only do audio you can't do video in a in a group well, call but if you were on your machine at home that would be a different story yeah, well, my machine at home is crap, and I got to get a new one. Well, don't yeah, don't say that about your I, machine. It, it's they, their feelings get hurt. Yeah, it's a desktop. I oh, oh, well, desktops desktop. are the most sensitive of them all. Uh -huh. Very sensitive. Yeah, they're very That's guilty that right they're now. not compact and can't be hauled around with you all the yes. time. Yes. Thank uh, God. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, Doug. Doug's raising, you're doing his Heil yeah, Hitler one salute. Of, one of your past celebrity guests was on TV the other day, uh, Gilbert Godfrey. Mm -hmm. uh, he was on uh, Wife Swap. Yeah, no, that's an old like, show. That's an old, uh, that, 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 he did that. That was shown a year ago. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was thinking, it was like, hey, be a good excuse. Bring him in the damn studio there. And, well, uh, my God. What the hell are you doing on that damn show? I'll tell you the problem with, 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 with Gilbert. He is a pain in the ass to get on a show. Yeah. You know, yeah, you seem like a pain I've, in the ass I've, in that show. I've known this guy for 30 years, okay? And we've known each other and we're friends and we, we go to parties together and we talk for hours with each other. And then, you know, it's like, and you come down and do my show. And uh, Charlene, I just said a moment ago, I can't take your call, okay? We're full up. Um, and I go, uh, uh, you know, can you come down? Come down and do the show? Well, I don't know. It's too early in the morning. 
you know, and then uh, and now, you know, I like to have my guests by Skype rather than bring them into the uh, studio here, although I could, but it just would be a little cumbersome. And but I like it because then I can add him into the mix like like the rest of you people. And uh, he probably doesn't even know what Skype is. <laughs> yeah. Sure, he didn't know how to drive. Yeah, so, it's probably yeah. too cheap to buy a computer. Well, he is the cheapest yeah. man I've ever known. Oh, they well, showed that on but, that show there. I mean, it yeah. was like, my God. I, I mean, I no, thought it was kind it, of a little bit of an act or, but, you know. That's for real. But no, that, he's that, cheap. That's for real. You never, I've, I don't know anybody that he's ever picked up the check for. Okay. And I know very few people that ever got away with not picking up the check for him. I mean, it shows oh, like his no. wife's picking up the check. Now, the only other guy I know who is that cheap is Ron Jeremy. Uh, he's and, a nice guy, though. I've met him. Yeah, but the, not, he's a very nice guy. But And he's super he, smart. It, but he is cheaper than you can possibly imagine. So what I wanted to do, I thought this would be a wonderful kind of like reality show, or one episode for a reality show, <laughs> is that we have Gilbert Gottfried have lunch with Ron Jeremy, see who and picks then up the we check. see sit there and wait to see who picks up the check. <laughs> see who's a better Jew. Oh, oh that would be serious. What would probably wind up happening, if I'm not mistaken, is we could come back about two years later and there'd be two skeletons sitting at the table. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. Yeah, Ron Jeremy lives in my friend's building in Hollywood. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, did they fumigate? Well, I won't go in the jacuzzi. <laughs> no, he, he's a, I've always liked Ron. Ron's, Ron's okay. The only tr problem with Ron is, in case people don't know who Ron Jeremy is, uh, he's a famous actor. And, yeah, uh, I don't really know him that well. Yeah. And, he's a Shakespearean and, actor. And, and, and it, he it will always tell you what he's doing lately, you know? Like, I did this movie, or I did that movie, or I'm doing this, or I'm doing that. And I remember one night, a classic night, I, hung, I, I we were with him one night at some event or something in Hollywood, my girlfriend and I, and sitting out in a parking lot at 3 o'clock in the morning with the back of his trunk open and him showing us his press clippings. <laughs> and then I this, and then I did this. And, uh, you know, he loves nothing more than showing press clippings. That's, Interesting. That's Ron. And get him on here. I probably the could. Thing, he I, used to be a teacher. He uh, yeah, he was a teacher. Industry. He was a, t a teacher. Well, I knew him back in the early days here in New York City. That's where I first met Ron, and uh, he had uh, he had been a teacher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's he's super intelligent. I was like. Oh my God! Well, well what do you? Does he, uh, he, what I don't like is that people think that he uh, he would necessarily be stupid. No, I didn't think he was stupid. I just was like, kind of blown away by how intelligent he is yeah. and the it's conversations like if you're, if we have. If you're that smart, why are you? Well, you, well, what's funny about what's what funny what about a guy like Gilbert? And I don't want to blow his image. But when you're uh, when you when I'm with him, like some Christmases, we used to go to the same party together, and we would talk for hours with each other, and he would talk some of the most serious things you can imagine. You know, we weren't sitting there making jokes all night. You know, he was talking politics and he was uh, talking culture and things like that. You know, um, you, you know, I, I now when I talk, think about stupid people. Who's stupid? I'm trying to remember. Like I remember, like it, ro in rock and roll, I used to interview a lot of Don't rock and roll people, up. and I and I tried to rem and I always, people always ask me, well, who was the smartest guy you ever met up with in uh, in uh, in rock and roll? And I'm trying to remember the guy's name now, but uh, he's it's a hard name to remember because, quite frankly, most people do not remember him. But he was so brilliant that I said, "This Frank is Zappa." The no, no. He was smart. Obviously, I'd remember Frank Zappa. And, of course, Gene Simmons is brilliant. Uh, he's supposed to be. I've never met him. Really? Yeah. Never came across as really brilliant to me. Yeah. No, he's he's got, like, a Ph.D. Mm -hmm. in history. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen him, like, in conversations on TV. Yeah. And it's like, oh, 
he's a smart dude. Yeah, uh, um, uh, but uh, who 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 was the guy? God, who was that musician? Oh, oh, Alvin Lee. Oh, oh ten, ten years, ten after. years yeah. later. Yeah. yeah, Alvin Lee, and he was the most intelligent guy I ever interviewed. I mean, just brilliant. But you know, he just because you passed away a few years ago, did he? Yeah, it was within yeah, the past two years. years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was Alvin Lee. Yeah, it was Alvin Lee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what is he famous? I, he's a musician, but I, I'm okay. I'm a little guitarist. I like to change yeah. the world. I like to change the world is the main song. Yeah. Well, also going home at, at Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. outside of that, he yeah. didn't have much of a career. Not it, a pop career. Not a, not much of a pop career. Uh, yes, D- Doug. <laughs> well, you know, talking about Gilbert Godfrey uh, and uh, forgive me. Wait, this is not going to have anything. Wait, 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 wait yeah, before yeah, we go any further, it's not going to have anything to do with your brother, is it? No, no. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Sean Hannity. That, that's for your next celebrity, at, you know, as a guest in your program. Yeah. yeah you know, you're going to be haunted with that question all the time. Yeah. Uh, now, but uh, it was the biggest mismatch in the world. But some reason on Hannity on his Great American Panel had Gilbert Godfrey. On there. <laughs> it just was like, I'm sure that's it's, the last isn't it time interesting. he's ever been on. It, it, isn't anything it, on Fox you know, it, Network? It, it, I mean, it was hilarious. Isn't it interesting that Sean Hannity stole Great American? From us, didn't you yeah. ever stop to even think of that? Well, soon. Yeah, I think he might have been a little bit before. Oh, he really? Read, but, uh, really? No, I've been didn't. using. Yeah, I've, yeah, been, I'm I've, just, I've been using it for about five years now. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. But like, I, I sent like a bunch no, of. No, I know he your, started I, using I it like after I did. Your website. What? Now, I had well, hey, this was like, hey, listen, yeah, you know, it, because it says Great American Broadcast. This has nothing to do with Sean Hannity. Well, the Cincinnati Reds playing Great American Ballpark, so yeah, you know what's going on there, huh? No, yeah, it, yeah but when when I when I when I, I we started it when I went to the Iowa caucuses, and uh, uh, I, I my friend Shecky had given me a copy of a recording of the theme song for a 1932 musical called The Great American Broadcast. And I said, that's got to be my theme song. I got to steal it before some right winger does. And so we started referring to the show as the Great American Broadcast. Uh, yes, uh, Dan. Uh, yeah. Dan. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, and now, you know, you're doing the nighttime ramble and you have this uh, theme song, do, 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 whatever it is. Um, I'm, <laughs> I miss that uh, Great American theme song. Well, one... And this is Great American Broadcast Network, and this show's kind of a flagship show. Mm-hmm. So That's I copyrighted, would, uh... isn't it? Uh, uh, it? Yes, it is. It's copyrighted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you played it before. Or no, you didn't. Never yeah, mind. well, we did, uh. use, we did use it, yes. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, what I found is that, uh, that um, well, we also had another, ver- was... we have another version of it. Yeah, that, that the we, one that, that somebody made. The one that somebody made. That one usually passes muster through like uh, YouTube and so on because it's it's not the version that somehow uh, it, it digitally makes a mark on uh, on that song. But, but it's, it's so old, isn't it? Past this the uh, you know copyright laws and you well, know what do they call it? Public it's, domain. It's hard to yeah, know. It's, it's hard to domain. know to tell you the damn truth. Um, uh, some music uh, is still in copyright. Music, uh, many times, I'll, I'll give you a good example of something that's very interesting. Music sometimes maintains its copyright longer than something else. Uh, songs got renewed all the time because there were owners of those songs or publishers of those songs, and they were very assiduous about it. And then when they changed the whole method of doing it to the lifetime of the composer plus another 60 years or something, like it is now, nothing really went into public domain. But what did go into public domain, and this is very strange, and for, for people who don't know what public domain is, that is simply an area in which something which is copywritten passes into common usage and can be used without payment, without royalties, and anything like that. Like It's a Wonderful Life was. Well, that, oh, It's a Wonderful Life is a perfect example yeah. of that. And and uh, But I'll tell you what happened there, too. Uh, the... Um, here's a little fact you may not know. The first 19 episodes 
of Star Trek, the TV show, are in public domain. Wow. They huh. fell well, out they me. fell out of copyright because somebody at Paramount forgot to re-register. Wow. Uh, Meanwhile, so a lot of people Well, did Paramount take it over? I thought that was a Desilu. Well, it was Desilu, but then the Desilu was bought up by Paramount. So any copyrights okay. or whatever that Desilu owned passed on to uh, um, uh, to Paramount. Paramount. Okay. So anyway, um, so here they are with 19 episodes that are, you know, copyright free. And there are people I know who are selling them online and everything like that. And Paramount's trying to figure out what can we do about this. And then they figured it out. It was very simple. The music was still in copyright. Ah, uh, how about the characters too? Well, the characters that you—I don't think you can copyright characters. Likenesses, right? I don't. It, it's it, it, there. You're getting into murky waters. But yeah. uh, if they wanted to be able to go after people for copyright infringement, they simply went after them for the music. And so, consequently, uh, you know. But I did know a guy who was selling uh, Star Trek tapes, and Paramount got a hold of him and said, "Cease and desist." And he wrote him back and said, "Show me your copyright." And that was the last he heard from them, you uh, know. Yeah, it's the same thing with there's 15 episode, early episodes of Bonanza that are out of, they're in public domain, and Again, they're, another, they're like repeated constantly on DVD, but they've had to strip the Bonanza theme out of it and replace it with some crappy theme. Some guy then humming, now, yeah, yeah. They've been, they've been released properly on DVD now, so... Right. Can you uh, well, you can alter the music a little bit, can't you? Because I remember back in you know I'm a I'm a radio junkie. You know yeah. WABC when they were doing top forty back in the sixties, they had that da 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 da, and that's supposedly from I'll Take Manhattan. Dun 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 dun, dun. and and that. But it's only they, a couple they of notes. Copyright for years on it. They kept paying to use it, and then in the eighties they dropped it, and instead of Da 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 da. They went, they went, they changed one note so they could use it without paying. Like vanilla oh, ice. I, I didn't ever, I didn't even ever hear that one because. Like vanilla uh, ice. You yeah. could, you could use, I think, up to 32 bars of anything without having to pay copyright. Now, I could play something like one night here, we played a little bit of Sinatra, but it's because I was using it as an example of something Sinatra had done. That is called. Um, uh, that's in, in what do you call it? Uh, a fair usage, because you're commenting on something, you're illustrating something, and that's considered fair usage. But if I played the whole song, I'd be, you know, I could get in trouble. Well, Alex, if, I if always, anybody, I if anybody listened to, to this um, thing, what? And you actually taught me about Professor Longhair. Yeah. What and about? That was, I always tied Professor Longhair to you. Because you used to play it all the time. Well, what, what about Professor Longhair, though, has to do with this discussion of copyright? No, music, your theme music. I always, oh, oh, oh. Your oh. theme for me was Professor Longhair. Right, right. Uh, you always had good themes. At play, you had you had Soul Bossa Nova, which was always a great way to start the show. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you had uh, yeah, you, Arturo Sandoval for all those years. That's That's how I always associated you. Right, right. Which one? Arturo Sandoval for the oh. actually for the closing of the show, closing yeah. of the hours. I, I kept uh, a swing. Uh, what's it called? Swing. Yeah, swinging. swinging. Yeah, swinging. It's old, old Dizzy Gillespie song, I think. Um, That's a great song. You know when I saw a documentary? Uh, I don't know how many of you get Netflix. Oh, excuse me, it wasn't Netflix. This was uh, uh, PBS. Uh, they run this show called Television, The Pioneers. Have you seen this show? I've seen yeah, it, that's yeah. that's a great show. And they I ran like an episode. They had an episode, and I laid my hands on it. I was watching it the other day on local hosts. Oh. In other words, uh, these were people who ran kids' shows. Uh, usually, this was around the 50s, basically. Uh, uh, ran kids' shows. And every market had its own kids' show. Yeah. And they talked about these kids' shows. And there was this one called something in Lambo down in, uh, down in I think, New Mexico or Arizona that lasted for 40 years and was number one for every one of those 40 years. Wow. Wow. 
Uh, something Lambo. Maybe you can look it up there, uh, Jim. I noticed Jim's typing in some stuff. Yeah, Dan. Uh, yeah, in Cincinnati, we had Uncle Al and mm -hmm. Captain Wendy. And uh, Uncle Al was started in the early 50s, and he started his, you know, his real early days of television where they were just looking for things to fill up time. And he played an accordion, and all of a sudden kids came around, and he got a show out of it that lasted until the uh, early 90s. Well, they usually, and, they usually went yeah. and got the uh, local drunken weatherman. And yeah. uh, they had him host a show for kids. Uh, Willard Scott yeah. did a lot of kids shows. Mm -hmm. He was Bozo. He, wasn't he on uh, 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 Captain Kangaroo? No, no. That no. was that was Bob. That was uh, Keishan. Bob Keishan. Bob Keishan. Yeah. yeah. No, he was a clown. He mm -hmm. was Clarabelle. No, wasn't he? Or no something Howdy like Doody. That? He was Clarabelle. He was like Clarabelle. Yeah, he was Clarabelle. Howdy Doody or whatever. But that's what. Uh, uh, Willow Scott was the original Ronald McDonald. No, That's yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, here's here's how that went. Yeah, what happened was he was bozo. Okay, mm -hmm. each market had its own bozo, and he was a bozo. I can't remember in Philadelphia, someplace like that. And then McDonald's decided, hey, it'd be a good idea if we had like bozo come out to one of our McDonald's on a Saturday, and the place was packed. So then they started advertising on the bozo show and kept using him to go out to the various McDonald's. Well, then all of a sudden, these mothers for tell of better television, you know, let's not let the kids get perverted or whatever, uh, went to Congress and lobbied them, and they had to stop doing commercials that were delivered by the hosts of these kids' shows. All right? So what McDonald's did is they went to, uh, to Willard Scott and said, uh, what can you come up with for us to replace Bozo the Clown since we can't use Bozo the Clown? And he came up with a, this was the worst looking clown you ever saw in your life. He had a, a uh, scary, uh, he had a tray on his head, you know, one of these box trays. Like a triangle box or something. Yeah, with, with like a, 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 a milkshake in it and some French fries. And then for a nose, he had like a, a sip, a cup, you know, a drinking cup. Yeah. And it was the worst looking clown you ever saw. And he called him Ronald McDonald. And that was how Ronald McDonald came to be. And eventually he stopped doing that, and they went out and they got somebody to take the cup off his nose and the, 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 stop carrying the French fries on his head, and they turned him into Ronald McDonald, a full-fledged clown. You know. I'm looking at well, a picture I of just that right to... now. What? what? I'm looking at a picture of that I Ronald want... I've never seen yeah. that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what were you going to say, uh, uh, Jim? Well, I just wanted to... Put a word in for uh, sort of the icon of the Pacific Northwest here. Yeah. And that was a show that it was actually, it 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 has the record for being the uh, uh, the longest running locally produced children's show in United States history. And that's the uh, the J.P. Patches show out of Seattle, which I grew up on. Okay. And uh, it, it was just, it was it was amazing, and uh, the the fellow who played J.P. Patches, a uh, guy named Chris Wiedis, yeah. uh, he passed away just a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, there's a large online community that still. I mean, we're. I mean, I'm a part of that. I mean, because he he was he was just. You can still get some of the shows on DVD. Unfortunately, a lot of them were wiped by the. Uh, by the television station because they didn't think they'd be worth anything. And wow. uh, so some of them wow. exist, and it's uh, it's kind of nice. But, uh, yeah, they uh, uh, they went from, uh, like, uh, the early 50s to the late 80s. Wow. Oh, really? And, and, yeah. and, and how many years was that then, do you figure? I'm not sure, but I, I, I do know if you, if you look them up online, they do have – there's a uh, – there's a whole record thing of them having the longest running locally produced children's television show. And even Seattle, they have a, uh, they have a big statue of him and his, uh, his partner, a guy named, um, Oh, uh, Bob Newman, uh, who is still alive, uh, who's in the hospital at the moment. And we're hoping he gets better soon. Well, what's but, interesting, uh, what's interesting is that once this whole thing about commercials and so on came to pass, these shows yeah. started to disappear, you know, because yeah. they didn't become. Well, what killed? Huh? 
what killed this show? I mean, they had that problem with JP because yeah. he used to do commercials. But what killed this show essentially was the creation of things like uh, uh, Good Morning America and well, what and, happened? The, and that kind of stuff. The, the, well, it's what happened to Captain that Kangaroo. Took that time zone. Yeah, it's what happened to Captain yeah. Kangaroo. That that real estate became so amazingly valuable right. that to waste it yeah. away on a kids show. Uh, yep. was, you know, even even if it was a successful kid show like Captain Kangaroo. Uh, yeah, and JP was on twice a day. He was on in the morning before you went to school, and then he was on again for another half hour before the news and when you came home from school. So, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have watched that. It's a clown. That scares me. <laughs> I don't do clowns. I just don't. Well, he, he even said he was. I mean, he looked like a clown, but he said he was a... He, he, he wasn't a clown. He didn't. He didn't I do just tricks. Looked at he his didn't pictures. juggle. He's oh, a clown. Wow. Oh. Uh, and, and he was a that's guy. a clown. Are you scared by him? <laughs> Actually, I did get a little nervous. <laughs> wow. Do you know I had a? I, I, I was scared at like two years old. My father jumped out of a box as a clown at my birthday party, and ever since then I've been scarred. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but it, 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 the the uh, uh, I'm I'm thinking about um, what was that? I, was, I came up with an idea here of a, a way to take this conversation into those things that scare you. Clowns are probably infinitely scarier than almost anything. I think Santa Claus in department stores is scary. Yep. <laughs> Irby Santa. Having yeah. been one. Having been really? one. Let me tell you. My yeah. ex-wife, my ex-wife, which one was it? Yeah, the, the one before this <laughs> one. Um, she was scared to death of Gabby Hayes. Now, you remember Gabby oh. Hayes? Uh, sure. He, he was in the Westerns. Uh, yeah, he used to say Roy, right? Well, that's because it's the guy he was with at the time. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> But he had a beard and whiskers. Wasn't and stuff. he in Blazing Saddles too? No, 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 no. That was no, that was dead. dead. No, he was long dead by then. Any, but that any, was a farce on him. Anyway, I, I, um, so anytime I would show her a picture of Gabby Hayes, she would start screaming, literally start screaming. And I, I could never figure out for the life of me why. I mean, there's, you know, I can see that you find somebody unattractive. You know, and I don't like clowns, and I, I agree with you. They're a bit scary, but I'm never going to start screaming at them. Oh, I never screamed. I just, you, I'd be, like, hidden somewhere. Yeah. And it also rolled over to characters at amusement parks. Mm hmm I finally went up to Goofy and had a picture taken with him when I was 35. Wait a minute. Back up. You were afraid of Goofy? I was afraid of any kind of characters. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> again, I know you. Again, I could be a science project. Yeah. Again, the the uh, the, uh, the silent uh, uh, the uh, the uh, yeah uh, the uh, uh, okay. Anyway, I'm uh, <laughs> what what's with me? I'm suddenly uh, getting all kind of like I can't uh, focus and to get a good topic going here. So, Patrick, it's up to you. It's up to me. You, World you, War Two. What? Gosh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> On this day in World War Two history. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, um, well, what did we we talked about the other night? What was uh, what was the uh, what was the uh, the most interesting war of the two wars? And I thought it was World War One. Yeah. Just because of the uh, families involved in World War One, you don't think about of it as a war between families. But the Tsar of Russia, the Queen of England, and the Kaiser of Germany were all related to each other, right, Josh? Yeah, it, sort of indirectly, yes. Like distant, like cousins, I think. Yeah, and they all kind of intermarried, and there were a whole bunch of things like that going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Europe was one big happy continent in some ways up until that. I don't want to say <laughs> everything was happy. There were wars prior to that. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it. Uh, Obviously, wasn't uh, they? Did, uh, I mean, they had they had two world wars that killed seventy five million people in a span of two and a half decades. So, by 
contrast to that, it was one big happy continent before. Yeah. <laughs> so you had like a European vi- version of uh, West Virginia. Well, yeah. I don't think it was. I don't think it was quite that uh, ridiculous. But you know what's interesting is is we always talk about the amount of deaths in these various wars. Now, which war had more deaths? World War One or World War Two? Uh, World War Two. World War Two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because what happened well, we is, the Hiroshima in there. as we keep going on with wars, there are less and less fatalities. And a lot of that has to do with triage, doesn't it? With the, how fast we can get somebody from the battlefield to a hospital? Um, yeah, in all wars. I mean, I think the the number of deaths in World War II, I think, was just a factor of it was just a much larger war. Um, you know, World War I was a called a world war but for the most part it was uh it was it was continental it was europe but you know world war one was a true or i'm sorry world war two was a true world war you had uh you know north america and asia and yeah. well, weren't europe they in and fact africa. weren't they in fact two separate wars um well there that's a good question um matter of fact i was faced with that question um a couple weeks ago when i was doing something is you know, do, do you feel as a historian that World War II was a separate war from World War One, or do you feel that it was just a continuation of the first event with a break in between? And I would fall into the school of, I think that it was a continuation of the first World War with a break in between, um, not because they were fighting over the same... Uh, well, it's pretty much World War things. I. World War, the resolution of World War I created World War II. In many ways. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I mean, I fall into the school of historians that would try and make that argument. Yes. I'm open to other. In other words, Hitler, took them, Hitler took them back into war. So it could be argued that was simply, you know, World War I.2. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. the argument that I would make. Yeah, but, I mean, then, but then you had. The Asian a- Asia Pacific uh, uh, War, right? And portion and, of that, right? And that but was that, an entire. But that was the, caused from World War One too. I mean, you know, the Japanese fought alongside the Americans in World War One, but they were very upset at the Treaty of Versailles. Um, just as upset as the Germans in some ways, um, they were uh, they were extremely upset that they they didn't really get anything out of that treaty. Um, the Asian race was kind of mocked etc mm-hmm. and they could kind of see this western and by, by the way those yeah. saxon by the way those charlie chan up. pictures didn't help either you know right. <laughs> you know yeah. but they could kind of see this coming and uh, they were very upset and then in, in the in the period immediately after world war one and the lead up to to world war two mm-hmm. they had a real strain of natural resources especially oil that's what caused their invasion of Manchuria, um, uh, areas of China. They started a war with China, et cetera. And the United States, you know, eventually cut them off from their oil supply. They had been buying it from the United States. They cut them off as a as a diplomatic ploy to try and get them to uh, stop their invasion into Manchuria, et cetera. Oh, and that was the reason for the attack on Pearl Harbor. They had basically decided that they only had enough oil to go for a couple of more years, especially since they were at war. And uh, they felt like the only way um, they could secure their their freedom for natural resources as a nation was to, uh, to make the United States submit to it and, and to get it by force um, to participate in a large-scale war and come out on the winning side, and then they would be able to get oil from anywhere – Anywhere they wanted, uh, you know. But the then we cut off other like raw States, materials, right? the scraps and stuff from uh, Japan, also the size mm-hmm. of oil. I think there were probably some other things. Yeah, I mean they were a pretty, they were a pretty dependent nation on, you know, the world economy, and I think after after one and the Treaty of Versailles, when they were kind of, I mean, and I think they were kind of right in some ways. They felt like they were shafted basically, and they felt like, listen yeah. here. You know, these these Westerners, this Anglo-Saxon white race doesn't respect us. They're not going to deal with us honestly, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, some events started in Europe, and um, they saw that okay, as their chance there, to get it, into Manchuria, yeah. et cetera, yeah. and it all kind of grew from there. Okay, but isn't there also the uh, the theory and, and uh, that uh, 
the United States knew they were going to do Pearl Harbor. They knew they were going to do something. And they well, wa- I think they knew that. And, they, and they wanted were... to let it happen so they could have it as a a pretense to ar- arm up and also to be able to arm up and enter into the European war, which I don't think we were in at that time. Well, no, we weren't. I, I don't. I don't subscribe to the theory that they let it happen um, purposely to to create a situation where the public would ask for war, um, which is basically what you're saying. I don't agree with that. Um, that I do think they knew that an attack. Well, I don't. I don't think we know that they knew that an attack was coming, but they did not know where. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did not really know when. Um, they had a decent clue right before. Uh, Pearl Harbor. Um, I mean, right before, I mean, probably less than a 24 hour window Mm -hmm. um, uh, that something was imminent. But, you know, I really don't believe there's any historical evidence. And I don't believe personally that FDR, um, especially for anyone, had any idea that it was coming at Pearl Harbor and they chose to, you know, quote unquote, look the other way. But was it used as a pretense, though, for us to get into the European? theater well i don't think it was purposely used i think it was a pretense because the public just up and decided that it was going to be i don't think it was asked for by politicians i mean i think a long study of world war ii will teach you that roosevelt was getting into that war whether the american people liked it or not sooner or later and he it happened to become sooner because of japanese aggression and don't get me wrong that he he didn't mind it, you know. I mean, it, it's it's it. I mean, it was awful, but at the same time, it was uh, it was like a political godsend it, for him. It, in it, way. Actually, it actually got us out of the depression, didn't it? Yeah, in the end, uh-huh. yes. Yeah, because up until that time, people think that oh, twenty nine, the depression, then uh, uh, Roosevelt gets elected, and all of a sudden everything's rosy and we've solved the depression. But all the things he was trying weren't necessarily working. And in the case of, uh, of, uh, uh, of solving that problem, the war came along, and because of all the arming and so on and so forth, it, it got rid of the, uh, basically the Depression. Uh, Jim? Well, I just, we were talking about World War I as well, and I just wanted to make mention of today, even though it's not celebrated in, in, in this hemisphere, really, yeah. uh, today is the 25th of April, which is Anzac Day. Uh, which basically commemorates, like this year is the 99th year of the beginning of the uh, the Battle of Gallipoli, which uh, uh, my grandfather fought at. And uh, take for, I mean, he had the the situation where he fought in World War One, and then World War Two came along, and they called him back up, and they basically said, uh, "You're back in the war." I mean, he'd gone on, had a life. I mean, he'd been injured. Uh, he got a military cross with two bars, uh, went back, lived his life. And then, uh, yeah, World War II came up, and they just said, no, you're back. We uh, we want you, and we need you. And so, I mean, what kind of luck do you get when you – I mean, you expect maybe your kids to go off to a second war or something like that, but uh, – yeah. Yeah. Well, you so, know what? You know what? I was just thinking about. You, you mentioned all these wars, and I am sitting here in this uh, in this building. In fact, let me just show. I can show the room here a little bit. But see those high ceilings and everything. It's just, it's oh, great nice. old great old place. But I I think of, I think about those ten foot ceilings. Huh? That is like ten foot ceilings. Try fifteen. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Get a man. Yeah. Uh, Got transoms. Yeah. Uh, it. It, it, when, but when I think about it, this building was built in 1900. It's been through how many wars yeah. in that time? Been through World War One, World War Two, maybe the Spanish-American War. When was the Spanish-American War, uh, Josh? Uh, what 1898? I think uh, it well, is. Well, this, this, they started building right this the turn pl- of the century. They started building this place in 1898. It finally opened up in in, wow. in uh, 1900. So the, the World War One, Korean War. Vietnam War, uh, uh, you know, Gulf one two, Gulf Wars one and two. I mean, the war on Christmas. What? The war on Christmas. The war on Christmas. the war on terror. <laughs> the war on Christmas. The war, the war on, on roses. roses. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I was just gonna say earlier because you mentioned it about uh, 
you know the the war ended in the depression and and it, you know i think that's a good as assessment but you know what really what happened with roosevelt was you know new deal policies were working pretty well uh, you know through his first term and then in 1937 he kind of reversed course and became mm -hmm. obsessed with going back and trying to balance the budget again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they cut a lot of those programs and it, it kind of pushed the country back into a, a small uh, or decent sized recession, which doesn't sound too bad, but w they w hadn't recovered from the depression right. completely. Right. So pushing it back into even any kind of recession, you know, unemployment was still very high, but, they kind of went off course. I mean, they, you know, they they had a, a a nice run going, you know, with some New Deal policies, and then, you know, they they kind of pushed off course there and pushed the country right back into almost a depression, and you know, really, yeah, the events in Europe did kind of. I mean, right. Roosevelt was a lucky man in many ways. It <laughs> yeah. seemed like every time he was about to have failure, something, something came up, happened, yeah. and intervened, and made him look good. And you know, but I'll give him credit. Um, he's one of my favorite presidents. I'll give him credit for seizing the moment, though, and doing the right thing right. at the right time. I mean, you can't blame someone for for luck, you know, turning the tide their way if if they take the ball and run with it, so to speak. I mean, I think he did that pretty well. It started with Lynn Lease, mm -hmm. and and you know we started making things for for the British, um, and then when we went to full scale mobilization, yeah, I mean. You literally anybody in this country could have a job if they wanted one. I mean, there were some people that could have two. I mean, it was it was that right. good. Right, uh, 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 Rick, uh, you had your yeah. hand raised. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, going to say it, it, it's interesting with Roosevelt with the depression bringing things on, and uh, he was headed in the right direction. And the parallel to Obama, where he had the opportunity to really take do a Rooseveltian thing and get this economy kicked up, because you said the war. Uh, basically is what got us out of the Depression, which is true. And, and it's basically just another form of, of a stimulus plan. It was just massive, and it was forced on everybody because of the war. The same thing would right. apply today. I mean, I don't know if anybody saw the articles, the, 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 the number of bridges in this country that are substandard, and, and we need tremendous infrastructure improvements in this country, yeah. and that would go a long way towards kicking up the economy again. Yeah, but he's not doing right. anything about it. Yeah, the 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 mobilization for World War II yeah. was a massive stimulus, and, and what was so strange is with the parallel is it was widely accepted yeah. because the public uh, almost, I mean, wholeheartedly was behind you know mobilization and wars. It's very strange that a public will get behind you know a mobilization for a war, and I believe that was a justifiable war. But my point is, in almost any case, they'll get behind something like that. But if you were to go and tell them you wanted to spend the same exact amount of money to do what Rick was saying, to build them some roads and bridges and a new school in every district, et cetera, et cetera, you know, there's a shitstorm over it for some odd reason or another. It's just people love war. I don't know what else to to say about that. I mean, yeah, war, you'll have to go war, ask a sociologist it, or a it, psychologist it, it, about it, that. It, I don't have the answer it's there. It's funny as though a war is not a last resort, you know? It seems to be an option, and right. it shouldn't be an option. It should be the last resort. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Patrick. Well, I just wanted to say, uh, in far of mobilizing and, and getting behind the war, uh, one of the hardest things that we had to do as a public or as the government was World War I to try to get involved there. We had uh, American uh, Army pilots, or Americans who wanted to be pilots because flying was brand new then, mm -hmm. uh, joined the French uh, military and the British so that they could participate in World War I because they felt very strongly that that was a, a fight that was worth being involved in, and our government was very standoffish on that whole thing. Um, up until we did get involved, but we, prior we, to we, that, we only got in. We only got into World War One. Correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. Just about a year before it came to an end. We right. We, we, yeah. There. Yeah. There except, was not. Uh, there was not much American military action. I mean, there was some. They only participated in maybe one or two large scale 
battles. They had to talk the uh, European powers. They almost had to demand it to to come in to to allow them to hold their own section on the Western Front, um, which they eventually did. Yeah, there it wasn't. Uh, I don't remember how many men died. American men. I mean, they did. We did lose a lot of men. Um, still, I mean, there was mm. about like you said, a lot of. It was a decent amount of military action that year, but yeah, we were not involved. It was nothing like World War II. Yeah. So anyway, you know, uh, is there any lesson that we've learned? I don't think there is. You know, I think the only problem we had is we came out of World War II thinking to ourselves, we're the good guys. Look what we did. We did something righteous and right. And we always have lionized that to this day with, you know, Tom Brokaw and his, uh, you know, the greatest British generation, generation. Uh, deal. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, uh, I, I think that if uh, truth be known, you know, we, to begin with, we didn't win that war. Russia did. Yeah, Russia was the one who won uh, Sacrificed a lot of Germany. lives. Huh? Yeah, tw- 25 million lives, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah. uh, I mean, I, I will say, though, I, I don't know if that is completely fair to give them credit. Um, well, what they're mad about is I we think didn't... You, I think, well, I guess what I'm saying real quick is you could equally say that that war wouldn't have been without one without Russia, but it also would not have been one without the well, United States. Well, the thing States. that pissed off Russia, and the reason why they had that animosity towards us at the end, and they weren't our friends, and really aren't to this day, was because we said we were going to open up a sec- second front against Hitler, the European front. And that they would t- start a front from their side, and then we would, you know, squeeze Hitler right. out. And we didn't start that second front till way, way towards the end of the war. In the meantime, well, <laughs> in the meantime, you had uh, you had uh, Russian deaths just mounting up like you couldn't believe. Right. But there, yeah, was- and Mother Nature had killed off Germany. There, I mean, that winter just, you know, they weren't prepared for that. Didn't have the fuel. Well, that and the, the Russia was lo- Russia was different stupidity. That wasn't Mother Nature. Yeah. Hitler never read about uh, uh, Napoleon going into Russia. I mean, if he would have just looked at the fucking history book and went, oh, yeah, War of 1812, Napoleon Bring going in, in the middle of fucking winter. <laughs> I mean, that's the simplest yeah, but that. still Mother Nature, yeah, it was Mother Nature. It was winter. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, Hitler's poor planet. I mean, Hitler thought he knew every damn thing. And he obviously didn't. Well, I mean, uh, there was the, the the plots against Hitler's life were ba- predicated largely on the fact they felt that Hitler did not have a the so this the uh, military felt that Hitler didn't have a good grasp on the whole thing and that he was driving them to uh, to destruction, which ultimately he was. Yeah. Mm, but yeah, but I mean, the animosity between the United States and the Soviet Union did begin with. You know that, but I mean the relationship probably could have been patched up after that. But I mean, in retrospect, though. But how about today? Yeah. How about how about right now? The relationship between the United States and Russia, it's getting well, back to the way it was back yeah. during the Cold War. Well, it's yeah. I mean, they're in a bit of a a period here where yeah, it it could very well move that way. But you know, I mean, in retrospect, though, I mean, looking back, there is sound historical evidence that will tell you. That there is no way the United States and Britain could have opened a second front in Europe in 1942 the way Stalin was demanding. I mean, it just, it just, it barely worked in 1944. Okay, I mean, that that second front ended the war. That's what I, that's what I'm saying is, you can't give sole credit to Russia. I mean, they would have never have survived had we not opened that second. But front. then, then after the war was over, we're running around going, "Look, we won the war." And meanwhile, they're sitting there on a pile of bodies that have been created as a result of, of that war and not being given the just credit for it. Well, perhaps. I mean, but you could also argue they got themselves into that mess uh, some, of somewhat of their own volition when they tried to make a deal with Hitler. And then, you know, he reneged and he basically allowed them to waste a year and a half or two years when they could have mobilized yeah. and been ready for him. Uh, uh, you know, Stalin I mean, they basically st- tried to be nice yeah. to him and, and, and appease like everybody else did. And he turned around and he fucked them. And you know, that, that's their own. Wasn't, uh, wasn't there a point, there. wasn't there a point at which Stalin was kind of aligned with Hitler? Oh, they had a, they had yeah. a, a deal of non-aggression. They, they agreed yeah. 
Russia agreed to stay out of the European war um, and basically, you know, didn't mobilize, didn't do anything and just let it go on. Yeah. And, you know, uh, uh, Germany reneged on the deal and, and attacked. And, you know, the other thing about the Germans is, I mean, they, they may have a huge amount of credit for winning World War II, but, you know, let, let's not forget that if you've ever seen the movie The Pianist, for example, mm -hmm. um, you know, when uh, Warsaw gets destroyed, you know, Russian troops could have liberated Warsaw days before, maybe even weeks. They literally sat outside of Warsaw and allowed the Germans, allowed them to go through the city and kill every Jew they could find because Stalin had no love for them either. They sat outside and allowed it to happen when they could have easily went in and stopped it. I mean, the Russians had a large part in winning that war, but they were they were far from Mr. Nice Guy in that, I mean, in, in that role. I mean, they... Yeah. You know, Stalin in the end probably ended up killing as many people as Hitler. Oh, he well, just did yeah. it in a different way. More, right. I think yeah. more, actually. Yeah, uh, probably, yes. Doug, yeah. Doug's got his hand raised. Were you dying over there a couple minutes ago, Doug? You were coughing and. Oh, yeah. I sneezed. I had to put my. You know, I left the room because I was like, I had a big, serious sneeze attack. So I apologize for that. That's okay. So, and, but I did probably put my mic on mute there too. So yeah, you did, but you, but it, it looked like you were dying. I, th I thought. Oh God, it was horrible. I don't know. It's, it's a pollen oh. down here or whatever. But anyway, Alex, but Alex yeah, is it's, disappointed now. Yeah, I thought he'd do a Rodale on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, hate to disappoint you there. Uh, no, but it just seems like you know our relationship with Russia. I mean, it doesn't really surprise me that. It's where it's at right now because I mean, like when Russia was fighting Afghanistan, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we we were you know supplying the you know the Taliban, Al Qaeda over there when they were fighting the Russian troops. I mean, it's always been this like you know this you know, adversarial relationship with us and Russia there. So you know, it just well, yeah, yeah, I, it, I, it, I, it's I like you know, we're we're not innocent in this. I think what the problem is uh, with with Putin, we've got really a guy who's old school. Yeah. You know, um, and um, just like I always said, you know, when they elected uh, George Bush Sr., a president of the United States, that it's a bad idea to make the head of your Secret Service Organization president. Uh, I think it's just as bad an idea in the Soviet Union to basically make the head of the KGB or uh, your president as well. Yeah, you're but right. But this guy is coming very close to being a dictator. This guy's coming very close to. Uh, um, uh, doing all the things that uh, that uh, keep one man in power for how many years? I mean, yeah, he's had other people who were uh, heads of the country, but he ran them. So you know, he's, he's like Iran. It's like Iran has a president, but you know, he's not really the one calling the shots. You know, is you know, there's a couple you know, people I, above him who are you know the supreme leaders. Yep. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I say we're on our way to bringing back the glory days of the Soviet Union. What do you mean, the days when the when the Republicans in this country could accuse everybody of being a uh, a, a, a Russian lover and uh, all that? That's that's going to come I, back too. You know that. I will I will sit on that committee and I will say, are you or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Yeah, and I will look at you oh, yeah. and say, go fuck yourself. And I will say, you are excused. A communist. <laughs> and I will never work again, but then again, I hadn't planned on it. So, you know, I mean. But that day, I think, is coming again. I think I think a lot of the a lot of the right-wingers love this animosity that's going on between Russia and the United States. And I think it's only a matter of time before we again re-institute uh, this whole thing of, of, of hearings and uh, have, are you now or have you ever been? Well, it wouldn't be a communist any longer, but yeah. you know, sympathizer for the Russians. Uh, yes, Dan, we got, we're running out well, of time that's here. But what, what you were just bringing up was just I was what I was going to say. It's not going to be politically like the Soviet Union, but certainly, um, obviously, Putin has his uh, dictatorial, totalitarian uh, take over the world kind of. Well, he's trying. It, what, he's guess, trying, what he so, wants to uh, do now is put the band back together. Yeah, exactly. But it'll politically, it'll be different. Politically, it's going to be uh, like I said, right wing Disneyland. It's going to be the right wing. Uh, it's going to be neocon uh, Disneyland over there. 
Yeah. Well, I don't know that it's so different politically, other than the fact that they're not going to call themselves communists, because they really weren't communists anyway. It was, you know, it was for the state, but it was for a core group of people. The Chinese were true communists. What was I that? Don't think the, the, I the Chinese think the were true communists. Will not let it become completely communist. That's just my. Well, I just don't think. I, <laughs> I think communism is pretty much dead everywhere in the yeah. world, except at the uh, at the People's uh, uh, Congress in Beijing, uh, and they go in there and play the game. But you know, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't what? understand how you can be a communal country and not have. Uh, uh, health care for your citizens. It just doesn't make sense. I, I always found it interesting that Marx's basic premise was that the countries that should have become communist were the industrial countries. And it turned out that it was really the agrarian countries that, that became quote-unquote communist, although they, they weren't a true communism. So it was like a, a big error that Marx made in, in predicting how things were going to go down. Well, I think one of the most important things that Marx ever said was, that's the nastiest remark I've ever heard. <laughs> well, there's an elephant in my pajamas. How he got here, I'll never know. I'll go down to Alabama with a Tuscaloosa. Uh, anyway, <laughs> hey, listen, you know something? It's uh, it's, it, 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 it's pretty much yeah, it's pretty much over. Yeah, son of a gun. Uh, uh, I want to thank you all for being with me this evening, Patrick. Wave goodbye, Dan. You got a camera finally. Wave goodbye, <laughs> uh, uh, Rick uh, Horn. Uh, I know Teresa's probably gone to bed already. She is waiting. Kiss her good night for me. Uh, Doug Dupree, Dupuis, thank you very much. Mark a Thorner, uh, always nice having you here. I said goodbye to Patrick. And, of course, you'll be listening to Rob all weekend long on his GabNet Rewind shows, which go on throughout the weekend and are probably more entertaining than the actual shows themselves. Uh, and that starts about 9 o'clock tomorrow night right here on the Great American Broadcast Network. And uh, Rebel Stoke Jim is next over most of the same station. Hey, everybody, thank you so much. Also, thanks to, uh, uh, let's see here, who else uh, 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 that I didn't name that was on for a while? Uh, hey, Christine um, Hicks, Rebel Stoke David Jim. Hadjik, who David. tried, Jim Browning, who is next. And all of you, have a good night, okay? Good night. Bye -bye. And we Bye -bye. will see you again tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay?